First, we're going to talk about how motives are developed into melodies. Then how they're used in films. Now, when you study music as a music student, what kinds of classes do you take? Theory. theory. You take theory. Composition. Composition. Orchestration. You take ear training. You take history. You take lessons on your instrument. You're in ensembles. When you study theory here, the two big things that you learn, oh, you also take analysis classes if you come here. If you study theory here as an undergraduate, what are the two, anybody know the two major things that you focus on? Harmony and counterpoint, right? Uh, I'm not sure what the, um, exactly what the curriculum is, but when I was an undergraduate student, we studied four part chord writing, we went through mock chorales, and then we went up through all the different eras, all the harmonic stuff, and then we worked on, we looked at Bach fugues and stuff like that for counterpoint, but we did species counterpoint, right? Um, how many of you studied species counterpoint? You went here as an undergraduate? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Um, species counterpoint is a uh, strict discipline where you get a fixed melody and you learn how to write other melodies against that in a step-by-step -step manner that starts off with note against note, then two notes against note, then four notes, then suspension, then mixed, and then three parts, four parts, whatever. It's, it's really... It's, it's, it's really difficult, um, it, and it's not really musical a lot of times. When you study composition, what do, you, what, what, do you, what do your composition teachers do, typically? They keep telling me my melodies need to be better. <laughs> but do they teach you how to write the melodies? No, this is like... Right? So, I never had anybody teach me how to write melodies when I, you know, I, I graduated, I have a master's degree in composition, not one thing about melodies, and it's the most important part of writing a song. While rhythm is the most important part of music, the most important part of, be of writing music for your own success is learning how to write a good melody. <coughs> because all those songs that were earning all that money have one thing in common, great melodies. People remember a melody. Now, a great melody needs a great rhythmic unfolding. That's true. But so we're going to look at some music here. And um, I'll pop these up. Jazz students have probably all played this at one point in your life, right? Do you know that this is a music from, from a film of the same name? Right? And the whole score is based around that first line of music. It's a, it's, it's a detective music film. It's in black and white, and a private eye is searching for Laura. And you know this is like a seductive. It's a 1940s film. David Raxson was the composer. Um, he was a great composer, and I think it was an Otto Preminger film. I think I might be wrong with that. Uh, it's it's pre when I like to teach. I don't. The 1940s. A lot of the film scores are dated. We're still quoting classical music. Um, we start where we started. Okay, so let me play this through this.
you notice about the first two lines of this song? Very um, lyrical. It's a sequence. Excuse me? It's a sequence. Right. It's the same thing. And what, what do they do with, this, with the melody? Go down. It goes down a whole step. song of the day, right, and ended up being, I mean, this has been, this song's been recorded many times by other artists over the year, but where does this, um, the melody, right, what, how does it relate to chord tones? In other words, does it use the root, the third, the fifth, or is it a little bit more advanced than that? So you have an A minor seventh chord, A minor chord. What what note is in the melody? The second chord, the ninth. The ninth, right? Then let's look at measure three. It lands on the ninth again, and then the sixth or the thirteenth, right? So ninth, sixth color tones. And it sprinkles in a little bit of chromaticism, right? So if you're going to a 2-5 engine, right, that would be the typical thing to do. A. But what he did was a little, a little half-step thing there, which is... It's, okay. it's, it's the first section and it's repeated with a little tag, you know, it, it's just, right, you could say it's A, B, A, C, yeah, you definitely could, but I'm talking about just the skeleton. It's a 32 bar phrase with 216. I see. Okay. And the way he's broken this down is into four bar bits. Now, okay, so we've noticed that he's done color tones on the melody. He's got a nice, he's got that rhythmic triplet thing. But you notice that the melody itself is very conversational. And what do I mean by that? It only goes on for as long as you can say a sentence. And then there's a rest. Ba -da, ba -da 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 -da. Your question and answer. Then the next bit starts. Da, 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 right? So it's not, it's not, one second. It's not. Right? It's not that. It's. Give you time to think about it, to digest the melody. And then you start again, right? It's like it's very conversational. Yes. Yeah, I was just saying that it's like a question and answer kind of melody. The question and answer for it. Well, how do you mean that? Where would you say the question is? Uh, where, where the break is, and then there's the answer. Okay, you could look at it that way. And where it's kind of resolving that's. That's where I would say that. Now, 
The thing about this movie, which and this is really interesting how this relates to the film, is that as this detective is getting further and further into this film looking for this Laura woman, he's just seeing paintings of her anywhere. He's falling in love with her. He's swirling <laughs> into this like uncontrolled romance with her. And that sort of happens with the music, right? It's, 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 it's swirl, it goes down a whole step. And the climax is right around the turnaround. So in other words, what I'm trying to say here is it goes, it's this basically descending, right? So that's da da, right then. So it's got da da. Then now we're starting to go up a little bit. First half, first eight bars, kind of descending. I mean, this is really a, like a, a simple tune's way of looking at it, but it's effective. The first two phrases are descending, and then it takes eight bars to get to that to the turnaround, right? So he's got four bars, and he repeats the four bars, and then there's that last phrase that leads you to the turnaround, which is seven bars, and then the overlapping on up, up, up here. You see what I mean? He's got four and four, and they're kind of descending. And then he takes all this time to get to this note. And then this leads us back here. You see what I, you know what I mean? So he's going down a little bit quicker in, in, in a different way than he's ascending. So he's making that variation there. Right? Does that make sense? Does it, like, I'm, am I making it clear? Yeah. All right. And what's also great too that he does here that's really fantastic is that uh, at the B section, right, it repeats uh, pretty much it repeats the same thing, and then he starts off. The last eight bars the same, but it's not. Right? So the first time the eight bars is. students would know um, as part as part of this. We'll move forward.
Okay. Another song that's a classic song written by a great composer, Duke Ellington, right? Um, now, I'll just play through the A section of this. What's different about this song in the background sense than Laura? It's a longer form. No, they're both 32 bars. Uh, a, B, a. This is A, A, B, A. Okay. Laura was A, A prime, you know, yeah. right? It was 16 bars and 16 bars. This is A, 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 and A. All right? So you see that when you're doing an A, a prime or 16 bar freight, you could take a little bit longer to have your melody unfold. Right? So you've, that's something you can learn. Because you've got 16 bars to make it work. Here, you've got eight bars to make it work. So what does he do with the melody? It's, it's not as close, it's, it's basically he's just Filling in a third chromatically, right, at the beginning there. Right? Or a fifth, right? And it repeats it down to minor third minor third. Right? That's all it is. And then it's just the chord that he picks. Again, color tones. 13, 9th. So, so in the, what he does is he breaks this up into two bars, two bars, and then I guess four bars, like from the D minor to the turnaround, from here to here, right? And he's got contrasting idea. That's how he's sort of bro broken up the form there. And again, he's using uh, extended color tones. We've got the 11th here. 13th, right? 6th or the 13th on that. Then the second time through, he, he finally resolves it down. And what's nice about that is that he can use that tonic to be the flat ninth of that B chord, because he's going to E major in the bridge. All right? And then he's got a completely contrasting idea here that he works through. logically put together in a, in a way, the way that he unfolds this. How he gets back to the B at the, in the last A section is he does kind of the opposite, right? He goes from a G up to a B instead of from a B down to a G. From a G up to a B, right? And then from a B down to a G, right? That's sort of 
and you can even look at it that he's on this E here, and this E is the uh, goal from here to here, right? From here is the opposite from the E up to the B. So you can see how he's using logic in how he unfolds this melody. Okay. I just want to make sure that we listen to some film music. We have time to listen to film music today, so I want to go a little bit. Okay, so we'll look at this, which... Okay, so this will be the last song that we look at, and then we'll start going into the film music. Um, or, but before I go, like, so you understand that with the uh, prelude to a kiss, Right, he's taken that motive. Right, he's doing that little chromatic thing. Right, with Laura. Taking that little motive and developing from there. Okay, so with this song. Everybody's heard this. Before, so somebody will probably know the answer. What's unusual about the A section? Seven, seven. seven bars. Okay, that's unusual for a pop song. So, can anybody just take a look at those seven bars? Let's take a look at. What's he doing? It's it's so simple. It's going back to it, isn't it? It's so simple. It's, going it's beautiful though. Okay. He's going from a non-chordal tone to a chord tone. Then he has a scalar approach to a non-chordal tone to a chord tone. And then he's got a scalar approach to a non-chordal tone to a chord tone. He surely wouldn't have thought that when he wrote it. No, but right. look. <laughs> right? So he's doing that two-note riff. Then he's going. Then he's going. And he's picking the right notes to connect them. Right? Because if he went. That sucks, right? Or if you went, you know, you'd be like, what are you doing? That's a horrible song. <laughs> right? But he picks the right notes. Just two notes. That, that's, the, that's it. And even the end, right? Well, that's the time that it's all chordal tones, right? Because you're ending the phrase. Would, you wouldn't call that a motive. Yeah. Call it a motive. That's a motive, That's man. Motive. Cool. He wrote a whole tune out of that. A little frame. He made $30 million out of that. <laughs> and every other freaking chain that wrote. So, anyway, um, and it's also nice, he, he goes out of the scale, right? Because he's, he's using bar for minor. <laughs> So ninth, tonic, suspended fourth, third. Now, it's also nice too, it's interesting that the high point of the song, like the highest pitch is actually right here, and it's repeated 
here, and here. So it comes in early in the song, which is interesting, I think. I don't, I don't know what the structural significance of that is. It's just a thought I have. So, you got two measures from here to here. All right, you got, you got this. Then you've got two measures, then you've got two measures, and then you've got this little tan. Right? That's, that's interesting. So it's not from here to here, it's this. Then this leads to this on bar three, right? Then this leads to this on bar five, right? That's unusual, right? He's doing things, it's very unusual. But that's the genius of the song is that it sounds natural. Now, that could be because we've heard it five million times. Um, I'm not sure, but that's sort of what I take on. And also unusual for a guy who can't read music that right? well, if at all, right? He's got the 11th there. That's nice. they, they can read normally, but this is. Well, you can read it. You don't know how to play the piano or class. They just play whatever you sound like nice. Well, it's, it's debate. It's like, that's what he says. But you know, I've heard him also say that like he used to play like pop, pop songs of the '50s and of the '40s on the piano at his parents' house, so they probably had sheet music there. But I wouldn't say that he could read well. But you know. Right. So that's nice too. And it's a nice contrast from um, the first part. So. Taking a simple idea, now this is the this is the thing, right? All of these things have simple elements to them. It's how you connect those simple elements together that makes the tune catchy, right? Right or. that idea. So also notice too that uh, on the on that D minor chord he changes that the, the, the modus rhythm a little bit, right? So it's a dotted chord note to an eighth note, as opposed to being the first time it's two, two eighth notes, then it's a dotted quarter to an eighth note, then it's a quarter note to an eighth note, and then it ends on a quarter. So every time it's the same interval, basically, although there's a half step in there between the B flat and the A, but he just varies the rhythm a little bit. But it's still that, that you know, one step above going down. Okay.